mean for you to have healthy pigs? What does healthy pigs look like for you on the management level? There's a few different factors. How well are they growing? A healthy animal is going to grow well. A healthy animal is going to show you that it feels good. It's going to be running around. It's going to be doing its thing. Antibiotic use is something that we do not administer antibiotics unless an animal needs it. There's no feed grade antibiotics. We don't routinely administer them. And so we can use that metric of how often do we have to do that on our farming operation. You know, if an animal gets sick, it's going to be the same thing. I'm responsible. I am the steward of that animal. Amen. If I don't treat it with the resources that I have available and it has to suffer because of that, then that's my fault. I'm not a good steward if I make that decision. It takes more intensive practice on the front end to make sure that they're rotated regularly, that you're not having parasitic issues and that you're not having, that you're not putting them in an environment that they're more susceptible. It's cleaning your feeders. It's doing things like that. It's making sure that they have a well-balanced uh, ration so that they have the nutrients that they need to stay healthy. They're just like us. If you eat well and you're living in a clean environment and you're doing what you need to be doing, your chances of getting sick, they go down. Life's a three-legged stool. If you want to be successful with anything, training, education, and experience. And there's only one way to get that experience, and that's just by doing it or by learning from others that have done it in the past. And there's a reason we have two ears and one mouth. Listen to them. So, yeah, just measuring those metrics is, it's a little bit different with each different pork enterprise. So a lot of it, again, is with weight gain and how we're doing with that. But with farrowing, how many piglets is she giving us per parity? There's a lot of different things. We're not as specific with breed. There's certain ones that we choose that choose not to use just because we're not sure that they would work well for our operation and the feedback again that we get from those consumers that handle the product directly we're more selective of their performance as opposed to the breed and especially with our sows we farrow on pasture and so having a sow that is going to be she's calm enough and docile that we can go and we can handle the piglets if, if anything happens and we can work with them but they may be out in the middle of the woods away from everything and responsible for protecting that litter. There's no crates. The mother is responsible for being considerate and being aware of her piglets being there too. So that's more of what we're selected for as opposed to uh, just any specific breed or anything within the breed or pork world in general. So. See y'all, this is why I came to his farm <laughs> because he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> He proved himself to be a very knowledgeable pig farmer, which I love to hear. Because there are a lot of pig farmers who, especially those who are starting out, who just BS yeah. things and just say things. And they're like, I'm not sure. Or this is what I saw on YouTube from some famous guy or whatever. And I've seen how that can be problematic for a lot of people who are wanting to get into raising pigs. This is part of why I created Pork Rind TV was so that way we can have experienced farmers <laughs> um, be able to share their stories, their context, and for people to be able to glean information. But I believe that your experiences are important and that your experience can give someone insight into their operation currently or their future operation. And so I like giving people options in that. And so you're one amazing option for people who can glean and pick. All right, so I don't have to worry about breed. A lot of people think breed's important. And not that there isn't an importance to breed, but when you talk about my end goal is not really to breed. We're not here to do breed conservation here. We're here to produce a particular product of pork, quality of pork, that works for your market. And so I like Ooh. the fact that you're focusing on the end goal, which is not necessarily the breed, which is a not a trivial issue, but more so a secondary issue compared to what are your end goals? And can your selection of the breed or even type of pig be able to meet those goals and your production needs? There's more to learn every day. That's the one thing that you got to realize is there's so much more to learn today and tomorrow than there was yesterday. The minute that you think you have it figured out that, yeah, that's keep learning. <laughs>